I recently watched a video that, well, prompted me to create this video. The specific video that I'm talking about is a video titled AI will not make ICP successful that was put out, I believe three or four days ago by James Allen of Cityscape. And I'll put a link to his video in the video description below for easy reference in case you'd like to go watch his video. So what essentially went on here is somebody sent something to James that somebody else said, and then that gave James the idea to create a video to give his opinion. And quite frankly, same story here at this point. So more specifically, there was a post on X, formerly Twitter, by Bobby O, which many of you are probably already familiar with if you are an internet computer bull for some time now. And you can see it on screen here in the video that James put out where Bobby says, yeah, I think they're all going to capitulate or have to capitulate. And he basically at the bottom here states, if you can't host AI, you will lose to the network that can. And of course he's referring to, if you can't host AI on chain, you will lose to the network that can. I poked around on X myself trying to find the same post from Bobby. Didn't find it. I'm not sure if it was a post or a reply or if he deleted it or if X is just making it difficult on me or if I'm blind. I'm not sure. But Bobby makes a number of other posts that are similar. You know, a new era is coming. AI and blockchain are projected to experience rapid growth over the next decade. ICP is the only network that can host LLMs on chain. If your favorite L1 can't host LLMs, you'll lose to the network that can. And another example of that, you know, imagine saying blockchain is the future, but then ignoring the fully on-chain model, then promoting AI tokens, but ignoring LLMs running as AI smart contracts on-chain. And then of course they're solving for AI on the web as it is the biggest problem to solve right now. And to be really clear, I'm not, I'm not looking to call Bobby out or James out or anybody in this video. I'm another ICP ball myself. Right, I'm currently staking 2,500 ICP in the NNS. I have shown this in at least one or two videos previously. However, I thought I would contribute my own thoughts to this conversation. And once again, here I am showing the NNS. If we just refresh, you know, just to show that this is in fact a website, not just a screenshot, you can see I have some ICP. In fact, for that matter, I actually recently bought a little bit more, not not a whole ton, which is currently sitting in Coinbase. I, I just have another 20 ICP that I just haven't transferred to the NNS just yet. You know, of course, there's already there's already projects on Internet Computer and some of which, of course, are on the launch pad like OpenChat and all of these others. You got the Decide AI, you've got Elma AI, Gold Dow. ICP swap, water neuron, origin, and of course some others that I didn't specifically call out, which you can see on screen. And so for those of you that might view this video that are not already familiar with ICP, with ICP you can host data on chain, fully on chain, at a cost of five about five dollars thirty-five cents per year per gigabyte. You have on-chain compute, and those two things combined with the the power of the network today allow you to do just about anything that you can do on blockchain you know whether you're talking about serving web directly from smart contracts instead of using a traditional web host whether you're talking about connecting web 2 and web 3 without oracles whether you're talking about impressive performance metrics indexed smart contracts so that your website can actually be found with a traditional search engine. All 100% on chain with no cloud, the reverse gas model, which means that it makes it easier to onboard users because you don't have to charge users a gas fee or anything like that. You can, especially if it's appropriate for a particular project. Internet computer is designed in such a way to where you don't have to. ICP is deep in which is decentralized physical infrastructure. When you can host data on chain in a plausible way because it costs $5.35 per year per gigabyte versus astronomical costs of trying to do that on many other blockchains, it becomes deep in. And then you also have compute on chain, you know, and they're integrating chains through chain key technology, 
They have native Bitcoin smart contracts. They're extending ETH using chain key ESSDA signatures, which is advanced threshold ECDSA. Internet computer smart contracts can access and use all digital assets like ERC-20 and ERC-721 tokens from Ethereum as well as smart contracts on Ethereum can use the power of IC smart contracts, which are known as canisters, at a low cost or relatively low cost as compared to traditional IT infrastructure and on-chain compute. But you also need to keep in mind the traditional IT infrastructure costs I'm talking about, that's just for paying for something like Google Cloud or Amazon Web Services or like the, the Amazon S3 storage. But the reality of the security and the expertise and the IT staff and the salaries of those IT staff, once you factor all that in, the $5.35 per gigabyte per year doesn't come across as quite as expensive as it initially sounds. You have cross-chain transaction signing, democracy on the blockchain. And my point here is simply that you can do pretty much anything with internet computer. If it can be done on blockchain with today's technology, meaning hardware technology, then you can do it with internet computer. It doesn't matter if it's RWA, which are real world assets, if it's on-chain AI, if it's Bitcoin L2, if it's DeFi, if it's gaming, metaverse, social networks, like the one that James Allen of Cityscape is currently working on and that project is currently going by the name of Cityscape, or whether it's anything else that I might have forgotten to mention here. If it can be done on blockchain, it can be done on internet computer. So to James's point, you know, he doesn't believe that the AI is going to be what drags internet computer into the limelight. And he might be right. And I do agree with his statement that it is hype. And I do agree that some of the capabilities of AI available today is a bit exaggerated. But I also think that AI is going to progress very quickly because for one thing, there's a ton of money behind it. Now, all of that said, personally, I don't really care what it is that gets the snowball rolling down the hill for internet computer, whether it's AI, DPIN, DeFi, gaming, metaverse, social media, don't care. It's going to be something. An internet computer can do all of them. One of the things that James said that, to be clear, many of the things that he said, I don't entirely agree with. And I also don't entirely disagree with. And I do think that he raises some interesting points. One of the things that he said is that he believes that it's going to be more about diversification. And quite frankly, that is one of the reasons why I'm so bullish on internet computer, because it doesn't matter what narrative you're bullish on. Internet computer can do it. Or more to the point, you can build something on internet computer, which can do it. You look at the internet computer metrics, just some of them right here. Transactions, currently being reported at well north of 8,000 transactions a second. You're talking about in excess of a million and nearly one and a half million ETH equivalent transactions per second. The cycle burn is substantially up. It's not as high as where it was pretty recently, but it's definitely a lot higher than where it's been in the past year. You look at the number of smart contracts, they just keep on increasing. You look at the blockchain finalization rate at just shy of 60 blocks a second. You look at the power consumption of the network, which is pretty low compared to a lot of other blockchains, if not the majority of other blockchains. So one of the interesting things about Cityscape's video on this subject are in fact a number of the comments. A comment that I would definitely like to point out in particular is this comment from Ant Spance, which reads, think you've missed the mark on this one. AI is not the key to winning, but it's definitely one of the major key factors, along with being 100% on chain, eliminating cybersecurity and DIDs. Most do not have a comprehensive understanding of what AI can actually do in this space. It's much bigger than most think. Coding, for one, will be partially replaced by AI sooner than you think. To which James, which is the creator over at Cityscape, replies saying, I've tested that. That's not true. I've had JetGPT write a bunch of different code and it made errors. So 
first of all, I'm not a developer, but I do know a little tiny bit of scripting and I do have an IT background. And I can tell you from personal experience that trying to use ChatGPT to help even with very simple PowerShell scripts, yeah, it does make errors in many cases. You know, I've had it give me commands that do not nor have ever existed. It'll give you commands that are deprecated. You'll be asking for help doing something in PowerShell with Microsoft 365, and it'll give you a command that is for some like ancient version of Exchange on premise, or maybe the other way around. You know, you're you're trying to do something with Exchange on premise 2016, and it's giving you commands that are only valid with Exchange Online. Along those same lines, in my current department at work, there are some former developers in my group. Those former developers have used things like Claude.ai and ChatGPT to help write Python code, which yes, they then go and, and clean up and shirt up with their development knowledge and experience. However, it still will belt out a bunch of code for them very, very quickly. And especially as you get good with prompting and if you find the proper AI tool to help with a specific task, it makes a big difference as well. However, when I see claims by Definity that anybody is going to be a blockchain developer because all you got to do is leverage AI and it'll write the contracts for you, I'll be really curious to test that. But to tell you the truth, I'm going to have a hard time vetting it because I'm not a developer. So the only way that I'll be able to even attempt to vet it myself will be to see if the applications that it codes even work. And the other thing that I'll do probably is I'll try to find smart contract or, or canister scanners to see if they find any major security holes in it. In addition to all of that, my own brother this year was laid off from his job. Mind you, he has decades of experience as a database architect. He also is something of a DevOps, not a full-fledged developer. He doesn't sit around and write code all day, every day. He primarily deals with databases. And he, in a roundabout way, was employed by SAP, company that you may have heard of. More specifically, Concur. SAP. And what happened earlier this year, his manager, my brother, all of his co-workers were laid off. The company states that they intend to replace all of them with AI. The crazier part about all of this is that the specific department he worked in had predominantly, if not exclusively, government contracts. Isn't that interesting? I wonder how the government feels about having these tasks being replaced by AI, which are likely in a black box, as opposed to being exposed for all to audit and see what exactly is going on, such as what would likely be the case with AI on chain with internet computer, which is controlled by a DAO. Times are rather interesting. I'm not one of those people that's fearful of Skynet coming anytime soon but I am curious what's around the next bend.